Okay, we'll call the meeting to order the special meeting for the uh, Bell Vista City Council on Tuesday, October 1st. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we have one piece of business on the agenda, which is a resolution authorizing. Mayor, we need to call the roll. We need to call the roll. Oh, okay, we got a call roll. That's right, it's a, it's a regular meeting. Councilmember Flynn? Here. Wozniak? Here. Wilms? Here. Fowler? Here. Work? Here. And there's Linda. And Linda's on her way here. here. Over. Again, we have one piece of business, um, and that is the annual uh, millage rate. I circulated the uh, letter back to you that was in your package last time from Betsy Harrell, who is the um, county clerk, and this is something we have to do every year. We receive a letter from them, and we have to certify, are we going to lower, stay the same, or increase the millage rates? Um, at the time that we received this, which was sometime after September the 11th. We had not received the first payment on the internet sales tax, and so we didn't quite know where things were going to sit, and we weren't going to see that number until after the official council meeting. And we have to reply back to Benton County by October the 20th, so, um, we believe that we would see the impact of the internet sales tax on the 26th, which we did, and we shared that with you. Um, extrapolating for a year, it looks like 400,000. That eased a lot of the concern that I think all of us shared. Um, and so now we're in a position to be able to answer this question, get a resolution passed, and get it down to Betsy. So the resolution is authorizing and levying the millage rate of um, ad valorem real and personal property tax for the city of Bella Vista, Arkansas for the year 2019 to be collected in 2020. Um, myself and staff are saying that there is no change. We will remain at four mills for general operations. And then if you remember, we have a separate millage of, of one and a half that was voted in by the electorate in September of 2014 for the firemen and the policemen pensions. As part of our deliberations, Carrie put together these sheets for me. So you can see the top one assumes no millage increase, a 5% increase from the new internet sales tax. We proceed with the water purchase from Centerton, and there are no critical street improvements. We had money in there, but we took it out. So you can see for 2020, we're fine. We're still at the 25% mark for uh, the reserve, which our fiscal policy demands that we have. Um, we are also okay in the year 2024, because as you know, we plan it out five years. And where we run into a problem is 21, 22, and 23. We're slightly off and below the 25%. Um, this might come and bite us a bit um, for our bond rating. When we get closer to it, it may not, but because it is so close, the good news is we have Harps is now back online, and they're telling me that they're anticipating a 50% growth in their top line revenue. Um, we will have hopefully Jimmy's Egg and the two, I don't say three because one's uh, simply replacing an existing, but the two other shopping areas, and um, that will raise the, the commercial tax base as well. The next sheet, um, just so you know the extent to which we looked at this, we assumed no millage increase, a 5% increase, but no, uh, no purchase of Centerton water and no critical pre, uh, street improvements. You can see that for the next five years, um, we are above the 25% that is required by our fiscal policy. And the last one, uh, assumes a millage increase, a 5% increase, a water purchase from Centerton, and no critical streets. And again, you can see that we're above the 
and I know that um, we still have yet to discuss at our November meeting what we're going to do about the water purchase from Centerton. So um, I feel fairly good about the top one that I'm showing you, even though for the years 21, 22, and 23, the forecast looks as if we're, we may be below, but it's too far out to tell. So that's the kind of analysis that we did. Is there any discussion at all? The uh, expenditures, you passed out a spreadsheet at the last city council meeting about headcount, $440,000. Mm -hmm. Does the expenditures include this, the headcount in these numbers? That headcount is in those numbers. So that's what, <clears throat> that's what the differential is from the, um, from the October 15th, mm -hmm. five-year schedule. And the headcount is in there and also the internet sales tax is built into it as well. So if there's any adjustment in headcounts actual when the time comes, that could affect this. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to see that when we bring the first preliminary to you, which should be in November of the 2020 budget. So, um, question. So the last, so year to day, uh, let me make sure I get all these. So, you know, take me through the math on this. Uh, so far, year to day, our expenditures versus our budget um, projection, we're to the good about $850,000. Mm -hmm. In 2018, we're, we're to the good $953,000. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, we're to the good $559,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we haven't spent in our projected budget in the mm -hmm. last three years. Haven't really got close to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that that number wraps around into the mm -hmm. All reserve those line, right? That's right. Which could take it down a little bit. Might. But yeah. so it, to me, obviously, mean, there's some side, I mean, still some some room. There. Oh, please don't take this as being the final budget number yeah, at all. But I'm just saying. Yes. You know, I'm just looking. Yeah. Right. So. It, the, I'm going to assume that the, the budget and then the revenue numbers are not the most optimistic. Uh, the revenue is not the most optimistic and the budget is probably fully funded. The budget is fully funded. The revenues, um, we're going to show a slight uptick, of course, in the sales tax because of the, of the internet sales tax. Um, but we tend to be very conservative because I don't want us to get into hot water. And that's what I mean. Yes. Exactly. I tend to be very conservative. Okay, so there could still be some room here. Yes, yes, there could be some room back here, right. What do you mean by no critical speed improvements? Um, over the space of a year, we typically spend $1.2 million on, on road resurfacing. This year, we're spending an, an, ex, an extra 700000 uh, to try and get ahead of the curve on some of the streets that were deteriorating badly. Yeah. And um, Mike had identified other streets that he would like to do in the future. However, it's just not practical. We don't have the money for it, so we will stick with the 1.2. Um, and we will stick with the road plan that we put together as a result, John, of the 2015 study that was done. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you mean, not having the extra 700000 but doing the 1.2 million. Oh, yes, absolutely, doing the 1.2 yeah. we need to do that. Um, so that's over, that comes from the general fund. Yes, it's well, a transfer. General fund to complement the return, uh, the turn backs for street. That's all the turn back that comes back, that's right, plus more. Well, the 1.2 is comes out of our... Yes. The 1.2 is additional that's, beyond it's the It's over and back. above, because... Yeah because of the way the census is working out at the moment. Um, so, a couple of years ago, we did a half mill increase, mm -hmm. right? So, oh, okay, so what, what's the top end mill that, that we can log on? It's, it's five. Five, five, five sure. In addition to the police and fire pensions. So we're at four, so we've got one. <coughs> we've got, got one you could go with. So we did a half a mill uh, that went into effect 2017. Right? No, 2018, I guess we saw it, which brought an additional about $304,000 in property tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Probably about 220, 230 of that was actually what I'm going to call the base, and the balance of that was probably new home. Probably, new yes. New home construction. And one of the things that we will see in 
2020 is the 2018 growth. It takes roughly two years before you actually see the millage come in from the growth. Mm -hmm. So we will, that was our, our banner year of 262 homes. So we will see slightly more and again, we will budget optimistically because 10% typically don't pay according to the, uh, the county assessor. Um, so that's why I'm saying I feel good about the numbers because I think, I think the revenue is going to be there based on the cycle. Well, you know, something else is maybe consider. I mean, we don't have to go full mill. We don't even have to do a half. I mean, well, we, we can do a quarter, right? And I, but I don't think we need it. I, I got you. But I'm just saying, I'm always talking through this so we all understand where we are here. I'm sure. It's not like you have to go a whole or you no. have to go a half. You can go a quarter mm -hmm. if you want to. And, you know, just to... I think, I, it, I think it goes a little bit. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So I was just trying to put a little, you know, put it into perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what I would see for my house, my home, my property, which would be personal property, and then I do own a lot beside my house, which is, you know, you know, most lots, unless they're on the lake or maybe a golf course, they're not worth a lot of money. So personal property, the unimproved, and then my home, if, if, it, if it were a full millage point, it would be like $25.48 mm -hmm. annually. On a, an average home that's being built right now, this is an average, which is based on $261,000, which comes off of the, the sheet that you guys send around. That's like, and, and, and I, took the, I took the unimproved lot out of it because I don't assume everybody has an unimproved lot. And I kept personal property at about $30,000. I, I thought that mine's a little bit higher than that, but some below, some above, some don't have maybe sure. hardly any. That would be like $26. If you have a $350,000 home, keeping personal property at 30, um, that'd be about $35 annually. Mm -hmm. And if you have a $500,000 home, that'd be about $50 annually. Just just to put it in real dollars and what it means. And so, you know, as, as we've said before too, Doug, it's not the property tax that pays the bills. No, I understand, I understand. No, I'm just trying to say what the impact would be on the sure. residents. Um, but what I'd like to be able to do is once we start moving towards the bond and if, if the voters approve, then we can start moving towards trying to get us down to an ISO rating of three. And if we do that, then there will be savings back to the residents on their fire insurance premiums. Do you know and what that is? I'm sorry? Do you have any idea what that is? It's no. Five dollars? It's too far that's away. that's not everybody. That's just some people that's with some, some companies. Your company. If you're with State Farm, I understand they don't use ISO. They don't. They don't. Okay. But <clears throat> Connie and I saved $124. And that was more than the millage increase. Yeah, I understand. And that's what I'm trying to do is set it off. Just for what it's worth, I talked to an insurance agent and I just talked through this whole thing. Sure. And it's true, you maybe saw $124, but that's not necessarily attributed to the ISO decrease. It, it, there's so many factors in play. Sure. There are. It's, you know, replacement cost of your home. It's whatever the your insurance company the rate they may be charging and the, so i did a five-year trend on mine mine went up mine went down mine went up mine went down mine went up and when it went down there was no iso change at all i i can't even explain it, it my insurance agent, mine was always going up until the iso yeah, change but, again. but i'm just saying and, and is when it goes from just a what is a four to a three um what you, you kind of have to be careful because you could say well you should see a, a decrease in your homeowner's insurance but actually, there may be an increase, but you know you could say, well, you got an increase, but it's not as much as what it would have been. But you can't really wrap your arms around sure. and put I mean, a number on it. I mean, you're gazing into a crystal ball. You know, I'm just all saying, I can do is tell you from my personal experience the last time, yeah, and we dropped from a six to a four. I saw savings, and there was a lady on Lake Windsor who called the fire chief and said she saved six hundred. Right. But again, to the point, it's like not everybody may see that. No, they may not. So. And um, I realize that the total increase for small millage is in actual dollars is very small, but I think it's more the perception. And I think if we were to change the millage at all, we could probably kiss the bond issue goodbye. I, I wasn't trying to rationalize doing it. No, I no, I understand. All perspective I understand. I would blend, you know, millage, sales tax increase, and then you have an assessment increase all going on at the same time. That's right. And looking at the numbers now and kind of where we are. 
I don't know that I would be in favor of the village increase right now. Even I'm just saying, I just looked at all the numbers. I wanted to know and that's what, we're what saying. we were talking about. And that's what we're saying is no increase because we don't need it. Mm -hmm. So why uh, why put it in play? And if PUA gets their assessment, the bond issue could be in deep caca anyhow. Well, maybe it's what the residents need to make that. Well, but yeah, they got to make that decision, but a lot of them still don't understand we are us and they are them kind of thing still. Although, you know, when we had the, the special election in September of 14 for the pension, mm -hmm. you know, the folks were completely... Oh, yeah, that's a slam dunk, and I, I told them back then, I said, as far as police are like, you asked where you're going to get it. Yeah. You know, their reputation from way back and continuing on is, is good. You know, I don't think they have to worry about those guys as far as if you ask money for them specifically. Sure. Okay, any other discussion, Doug? The bridge. Uh, you know, we've got the Walton Family Foundation. So where do we, as a city, where do we net out? Did we net out zero on that or real close to it? Are we able to discuss that? It's not on the agenda. It's okay. Well, if it's part of the debate over what the millage ought to be. Well, but, well, what I'm saying is, you know, it, it played a factor experience. of our numbers moving forward. If, he's ta if you're talking about how this relates to the numbers on the page, sure, yeah. you can talk about it all you want. Sure. It's completely taken out. <clears throat> I knew, I just wondered, it was net zero. We didn't, we're not walking away. At the, it's net zero at the moment. Who knows? But, yes, they were very generous and um, close. Uh, they've given us, it's so close, it's a hair. Okay. Mayor Bosti, you mentioned uh, 400000 I think, in context of the uh, internet sales. Yes. Could you unpack that one a little bit? I'm having trouble. Three hundred and ninety. so I've rounded. 390 uh, appears to be the extrapolation from the Benton County portion, or 11.98%, and 100000 is from our 1%. That's about all okay. we can see. Right, we're going to benefit both on the county side yeah. and the yes. city side. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I don't know if all of you have seen it, but what Kerry gets is a breakdown at a very high sick level. The sick is an industry coding. And all we can see is um, very, very high level stuff. So it says, I'm not sure if it says internet sales tax. I think it might. I can't remember the actual term. It does. But you it saw says, the bump. It you saw the bump on both. You did. We were running. We already had internet sales tax being collected. So okay. apparently this, yeah. law, this law affects not the primary internet carriers like an Amazon. Everybody. But it, all the people that, if, if, if you bought something from Amazon and it came out of the Amazon warehouse, they, paid. they were already collecting that Correct. sales tax and remitting it. They Amazon. started doing that a year or so ago before okay. that new statute took, in, took place. The, the real, I mean, legally, since that's why I'm at the table, sales and use tax was already due and payable on all these purchases. Mm -hmm. But it right. required you to voluntarily remit that form right. with your state right. income tax right. and say, right. yes, I spent $22 on a pair of pants on Amazon yes. on March 1st, and, yeah. I did, and I want to pay my 8 point seven, you know. And uh, people were not doing that. And, and there was wrong. not a good collection method until this new uh, structure came into play and a U.S. Supreme Court case happened. Right. So, okay, but... What we have really is a single data point. It's hard, as, as you've said, very, very hard. to really uh, extrapolate exactly what it so looks again, like. Being but, conservative. It's like we used to say, say no sales environment. You know, one week doesn't make a trend. That's right. Sure. So absolutely. one is a dot. Yes. Two is a line. Yeah. Three is a trend. Because yeah. that's my sales thing as well. Right. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. Kind we're going to have to wait and see. What is the full benefit of that? I'm, over time. I'm sure like that we're going to see a bounce because of Christmas sales, but who knows what it's going to be because typical retail, Doug, you probably remember this, in January it slumps because everybody spent everything so it just boom, it bottoms up. So we're going to have to see the trend over time, but we feel fairly confident that it'll be with that, around 500000 So as it comes back to the headcount request, for example, Chief wants two for CI, uh, CID. And we may hire one within the first quarter, and then we'll wait to the summer to hire the second one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that we can get a better perspective on just where is all this falling and what does the trend look like. You don't so, go out and hire them all at once. So in our last meeting, uh, you handed out a spreadsheet that kind of had the department head needs yes. in that. That's right. In the context of, hey, consider these things, 
with regard to the millage increase. I understand that some of you came and met with Chief and others, and thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And so we're saying those positions now we feel like are funded. Are do, don't need any help. That's right. That's right. Well, for the years, <clears throat> what, we have one more year in the fire training program? Yes, and it changes again next year. And you work that into the number for 2021. Right. And you, you assume the full complement coming back? In 2022. And then we're getting part of that pass in sales tax on the gas. That goes away in a couple of years, too. But it's being supplemented by the tax that came in today. Yeah. Three cents on regular and six, regular on, diesel. six cents on diesel. Yeah. We also buy gasoline, though, we need to remember, so we'll be paying more. I don't think cities have to pay what sales pay? tax. Um, um, well, we have, I'm sorry, we have our own sale. Yeah. Don't, don't we will pay more anyhow? Yeah, the pump are going to pay more. But I read too where they're going back to the state legislature on the uh, tobacco tax for the cities that are on the border. Um, Probably doesn't mean a whole lot to us, but they're going to go back and try to review it and see if they can get it reinstated. I yeah, actually remember that them. just. The, in terms of tax collections, that meant the tax went up when they removed oh, the benefits. Yes. So that would be a tax cut you know, to right. balance yeah, the yeah, border. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But the volume has gone down. Yeah, I mean, it hurt sales in total here. So I was on a call with um, Mark Hayes and some of the other mayors. <clears throat> I think we're going to be okay. Um, Mayor Blackburn mm -hmm. and Garfield's in real trouble. He did ask Mark what was the likelihood of getting it on the agenda for the fiscal session coming up next year, and Mark said, not likely. You may have to sit out a year and wait for the next, uh, the next legislative session in 21. I did speak to Senator Hendren last week as well about it at an event uh, early on the evening, and simply just gave him a heads up that Mark was involved, the AML is involved. And so is um, Senator Bledsoe. She was there at the same event uh, uh, last week. But I don't think it'll hit us too hard. Casey's has seen a bit of a drop. Um, Allen's has seen about a 20% volume drop. Um, but certainly, if your numbers are small, like Garfield, it's a huge hit for them. Sorry, I got sidetracked with anything else. Do we have to have a motion to approve the Yes, we do. Yeah. To, to remain at 5.5 .5 mills. You need to have a motion to approve the resolution. Okay. That's what the resolution I'll make a motion we approve the resolution to at 5.5 mills. Second. Yeah. Second, John. Thank you. John. Any further discussion by anyone? I, I do have a, a, one other issue I want to raise, mm -hmm. and it has to do with the, the city's statements on Facebook. Uh, seem to kind of reframe the millage increase away from the spreadsheet and the headcount needs and into the water proposition. And I, I don't feel like we need a millage increase either, and I don't feel like that drives the decision around the water proposition. I think they're completely no, unrelated. No, because that's what we've said here. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, they're completely unrelated. So I'm not sure why I read this on Facebook. I, I thought it was a reach for this kind of information to be put out in social media prior to the city council having discussed it. I disagree with the statement completely as it's written. Did you call Cassie and, and talk about it? Uh, I'm Which here today to okay. talk to you about it. Okay. So, uh, That's right. I, I, I suggest we do our business with each other at the table within the context of the city council meetings mm -hmm. as they're structured, not on social media. But we do have to mention on social media that, the, that it, it is being discussed. For example, when this, uh, this hearing comes up, I will be obliged to stand in front of whoever's going to run this thing and tell them that there is division within city council and we won't know until the end of November whether we're going to move forward or not. That's fine. But that's a complete but the statement. Issue. But the statement that was put out on Facebook is incorrect. It's incorrect as it's stated. 
Well, except I've got a lot of red here now, but I feel comfortable that we'll be able to do that. But, but what I think the reach was, was trying to tie it to the water proposition to say the only reason you would need a millage increase is for the water proposition. I and didn't read you, it that way, but if that's... Well, okay. that's where it reads. I suggest you read it again. Okay. But well, we're and, fine. And, I'm not going to so, raise the millage. Okay. I agree. Yeah. And, so, and so I think, I think both of those statements, the comments that are made subsequent to the original which was, the original was really just information about the meeting, giving people right. a heads up. I think the other two comments were a reach, probably not how we should be doing business. Okay, that's fair. Anything else? There's a motion. A Ready for the roll call. A motion on the table. There's a motion and a second. Councilmember Lloyd. Hold, hold on. Would you, yeah. would you kind of frame it for us so if we say yes or no? What, what the motion it? was to approve the resolution as stated in your packet. Okay. Keep, keep the millage where it is Got it. at this point. Right. Thank you. So that's 4.0 uh, 4 for general fund. It's a half a mil for the police. And it's, a, it's one mil for the one pension. Five. Five. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, for the fire pension. Total five and a half. Five and a half. Okay. Councilmember Lloyd. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Bork. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Sherry, six two. Okay. That concludes any of the business. Um, and I think we probably had a good chat about things. We're adjourned. We're adjourned.